Hello everybody. Good morning to Maybe I should put on my hard hat now. Hi Uncle. Hi. I'm Good morning. Um yes. I'm gonna use this for okay. for my two puppies when they make poop. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good morning everybody. How's everybody doing today? Uh you know we had an eventful evening last night. Very the lava eruption was really really active and we've been noticing that a lot of the activity is being happening at night um, so we'll have a question over um, what's going on with uh, that also we'll be meeting with um, we'll be meeting with uh, Dr. Phil and talk about what's happening later on today um, and also later on this live feed so just kind of some some stuff that I witnessed um, a lot of lava came out of the, the fissures last night and pushed towards Kahukai area from the Malama side and pretty much took out a lot of homes especially um, and then crossing over Kahukai and entering into the Pohiki Road it was moving 275 meters an hour so it's already crossed the road um, into um, past Pohiki Road from Lilani Estates and moving into the papaya farm or the grass, heavily grassed area, um, but near PGV. So, uh, you know, with that being witnessed, the lava is moving super fast and I am okay, everybody. I'm all good. I'm all good. Um, everybody was worried about, about me last night, but I'm good. Um, got out in time. Another thing too, um, new update. Okay, here's a here's the update. Pohiki, Pohiki um, Beach and boat ramp. Um, talk to P Park and Rec um, director yesterday, um, and he said it's for sure they're gonna open up Pohiki boat ramp and. Um, and uh, swimming area and surfing area so they said at nine o'clock gotta go grab your placards at Pahoa Rec Center so the park will be open from 9 to 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, it was you know, no boats because that's DLNR DLNR closed down a ramp and um, this is county so county opened up the park so no boats Trust me, Bonnie, we've been trying to get the boats down there. Um, but this is the catch. Um, so the, the mayor had, had had made the decision to open the ramp. I'm um, not, not the ramp, but the park. So they had uh, county crews down there to open up the park and work on it yesterday. Just for the day. But here's the thing. This is my concern. There's gonna get so much people go down there, and I just seen, I just heard about it, and I seen about the um, the line at um, Pohoa Rec Center. I know for a fact, bunch of people not gonna go down there to swim and enjoy the water. Only the locals and some of the some of the local, all the local people that's surfing. They want. I know a bunch of people that is actually going down there. And go park their car in the parking lot and try get to the lava. I know for a fact, guys, and this is this gonna be this is a concern for all the first responders and gonna gonna screw them up for all the people that are actually gonna enjoy the water down there. And um, you know something, I feel bad for all the uh, first responders like the police department and and the fire department because people gonna go down there park in the parking lot use the facility use the county and go straight to the lava the lava is only like not even half mile down the road that's what gonna happen because it's gonna screw them up for everybody that is actually from the area and actually from the place that love to go down there for surf and enjoy the water because when you get one rotten egg on screw them for everybody else. And that's my, that's my mana on this. I really think they should have thought this through. And, I, you know, I don't have any say in it. And, um, you know, 
as far as me, I, 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 I've seen people in the line that I know not going to go surf or swim because I know they're like, they're getting ready because they know more than swimming shorts. <laughs> they get their pants and hiking boots ready to go hiking, to go look for the lava. So, and then if they go look for the lava, you're only going to put the first responders in jeopardy because now they're trying to um, mitigate everything that is happening in the park. And and these guys are going to try to go look at, look, look at the lava or try to hike around the coastline. And To me, I think that's a bad decision. But, you know, that's not my decision. Also, another thing too, um, I read a tech, I read a post. So, all of this was happening yesterday. And I just read um, a post this morning from uh, one of the workers at uh, the, the the center here. I'm not going to mention his name, but he posted that today is a holiday, so they're not going to open. So they're not going to open up the, the community center because it's a holiday. So I don't know what's going on. I don't know. There's conflicting, conflicting, um, you know, information. So, but that's that's my take on it. You know, the first responders had a handful last night. Uh, police department had to get everybody out in the nick of time because the lava flows was moving so fast. And another thing too, you know, um, it, a lot of people are gonna be using um, the road, Highway 132, and it's pretty much in jeopardy because the lava just crossed the road earlier this morning, it could cross Highway 132 again. Then now you got so much people down at the beach and if something should happen and the wind switch or something, you only get one way out, which is beach road. So for me, I don't know for, I, I don't agree with opening up um, Koiki because just, just the amount of liability that is happening because I know for a fact, a lot of people gonna try walk to the lava and that that's the one that can pretty much screw them up for everybody in everybody that is from the area all the all the local brothers all the local local surfer, surfers and all the people that call that place you know their home um, home break because all it takes is one rotten egg um, so other than that I get one old time over here and he can talk about a two alkaloid. Alkaloid, <laughs> <laughs> what you think about that? Opening up down there. Yeah. That could be a nightmare, yeah? We all know that. that nightmare. Um, and that's the thing, our first responders are gonna have to work hard. How are we gonna keep the people out? All our ocean safety, the fire department guys, we all know that one, yeah? It should have, that's just my thought on it. it should have thought about it a little bit better we've been down there many times we know what can happen yeah. you know all the guys running illegal tours going in hiking yeah. doing drop off so anyway we all just looking for kaika keep us safe and keep us informed and that's what it is yeah so i you know, it's I, i'm all down for all the local brothers going surfing hell yeah i would i wouldn't mind going surfing myself i wish i could go surf but i sink the board now <laughs> But anyways, no, I just think it's a bad idea. But if you can go down there for surf, oh, that's that's what's supposed to be. And enjoy the ocean over there. Enjoy Pohiki. No, go down there for use Pohiki as on, um, as on, um, you know, something for your benefit, like taking people into tour or go go ahead and go look at the lava or something like that. Because you're only gonna get people into in, into jeopardy. So with that said. We got the new update with Mr. Philip Ong, Dr. Phil, and um, we can go over what's happening. All right, Phil. Okay, how's it? So we're still looking at the same map from yesterday, but we can still point out what's been going on. So the big news overnight was the, well, let's look over the fishers first of all. The ones at the east end, they're kind of dying off. So there's still some activity over here, but a lot less. The ocean entries, have both been getting really weak. Actually, there's maybe a third weak entry point down here somewhere. 
but that's basically slowing down quite a bit. And most of the activity is actually shifting over here to the west. So the main fissure is 21, 7, 24, and we think 25 is right in here next to it, yeah. Um, also 13. 13 is the one that's putting a lot of lava down in this direction down towards the ocean as well. But basically all on this side over here. There's still stuff happening over here, but it's definitely slowed down a whole lot. So we're kind of seeing a pattern of shifting over this way. And it was in this area up here around number seven that we had built that really big perch pond. That's the one that last night broke and gave way. Uh, kind of going to the north this way and turned and through the neighborhood off of here. And this is the one we heard reports has just crossed Pohiki Road right up here. Right next to the DGV uh, boundary right there. So that's, if it keeps going that way, the rate has been going, it's not far for it to get across 132 right there. Right, it's going to go around the north side of these cinder cones, this poo and expect them to cross the highway there probably pretty soon. Um, Ryan Finley put together a time-lapse video of this from based on USGS What's camera. What's this time-lapse video that um, USGS put out? Yeah, so it was actually, oh, hold on, it was Ryan Finley put it out. No, so the map they the map the map that they they using right now is actually old. Um, it's not old. Yeah. It's it's, no, it's because hairy. it's yeah. they update it every day, and that's how that's the difference that happens. So, so I'm sorry. So this is Harry Durgan's compiled this, yeah. But this is a couple compilation of uh, webcam images from the PG cam that USGS runs, and starts uh, yesterday at 8 a.m. and goes through this morning, yeah. So. This is the flow that's coming into PGV, the first finger, right, here it is. Right. And then you'll see in the middle of the night, a new branch, right, this is the overflow right here that came across the division really fast on this direction right there. And this is the one that was trapping people and bringing down houses really fast, and that's the one that was moving really, really fast, yeah. And the reason for that is that everything was built up in a giant perch pond, like an above ground swimming pool, and the side broke open. So that was a huge flood that came out all at one time. That's why it went so fast. That's kind of the worst case scenario we've been worrying about this this whole time. Is what if these one of the big ponds, the side breaks, and everything comes flush, comes flooding out, and that's basically what happened. So moving so fast, people don't have time to put stuff in the truck, get in the truck, start it up, and get out the driveway, right? So that's that. You know, that's how how, how fast it can go in a worst case. And that's why we're suggesting anyone who's still in the area, let's kind of think and keep happening more and more. So better to get out of there. So yeah. another thing too. Um, oh, another question. Yeah, until Luana's house got taken this morning, um, early this morning. So um, until Luana Jones. So everybody have to, you know Aloha that family. Um, until Luana Jones. Um, another thing too. I just like to let, let everybody know. You know, I've been kind of telling everybody about evacuating. Um, Especially, especially, wait, wait, especially, um, you know, um, last night, so much people, um, people's homes got taken so fast. I mean, the, the severity of the flows that was coming through Leilani last night was, was creating a huge panic. And um, there's tons of, tons of, you know, people that were still trapped in um, Leilani because the lava was moving super fast and I, I, I don't know how I can stress that but you know the, the flows are not stopping and it's actually starting to get in starting to pop, pop again, populate in this subdivision and it's building these perch ponds and these perch ponds is once they start to build the perch ponds you know it, it's bound to break bound to break off and start flowing into the uh, subdivision and that's where people don't understand these these perch ponds move so fast so quickly that you can get trapped even and, and noticing that all these flows are actually um, these huge eruptions are happening happening at night imagine if you were sleeping and you would even know that these perch ponds were breached and start flowing down towards um towards your home so that's the spooky part so people um always be be prepared if you're staying in there i would i wouldn't suggest you staying in there um other than that we're really pushing the edge right now right so yeah yeah so again i like to just re rephrase on the pohiki thing um pohiki 
it will be open today. That's what I got the news from the PNR director yesterday. Um, they are opening up Pohiki at 9 o'clock a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and my thoughts, I, I said, I talked about my thoughts of opening up Pohiki. And I am all for it. Um, but I'm, sh I'm sure, um, you know, a, a lot of people are use that when they use that opportunity for themselves and um, I've seen uh, there's tons of people that are trying to get the placard today but if you go to earlier of my video I can talk about that but other than that any more things no we us get some questions yeah we're still compiling questions but haven't got a chance to address them there's so much happening so quick yeah so come by the pool Honua or Puna and come and talk story with us if we're here um, we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner for everybody who is affected by lava. Um, oh, so PGV, PGV. Um, I think um, three or four of their wells got got um, covered by lava yesterday, um, and um, I heard you know some of the people that live close by. Um, there was huge, um, not huge, but some quite a quite amount of steam coming out of those wells um, but after the, the the lava covered it that was that um, other than that I don't know. no you don't have to I, I, I know is way way off um, the area so you, you're, you're okay everything's okay um, well everybody is lava headed to Noni Farms Road um, it's quite pretty far away from Noni Farms Road. Um, it's about a mile and a half from probably a mile away from Noni Farm Road, but anything could happen. Um, you know, anything could happen really fast. Lava is flowing really fast, but Noni Farms Road is pretty far down. Um, Highway 132 is okay for now. Um, if that flow that opened up last night could be breaching Highway 132 if it still have has that punch to go through so it's, yeah it's, slow, it's slowed down a lot but it's, it's slowed down a lot that flow but it's still active and it's still moving not as fast as last night when it broke open the dam yeah but it's still moving Nana Valley is okay for now um okay we, we'll talk about Nana Valley right now yes yeah. so, yeah. so the flows yeah, so, so you see these blue lines here these blue lines are considered the steepest descent lines. So this is in the topography, this is where the lava would pretty much travel towards the ocean. So you see the line of valley is all the way over here. And these flows are actually going this way. So it's actually gonna go right here. Go uh, south side of Nana Valley and continue on down. So you know if there's a huge flow then it will kind of spread and then would catch this um, descent line and then would brush Nanavale on the backside. But as far as right now, Nanavale is in the clear. The only thing about Nanavale that I'll be worried about, you know, the uncertainty of PGB. That's that's what I would kind of um, be worried about. But, you know, four wells went down, nothing happened. So that's a good thing. But there's still uncertainty about seven more wells. Right? So yeah, for now that's the main concern. Yeah, if the flow does go farther, there's going to be more smoke also. And we haven't talked about the winds today, but the, we're expecting more more gases in the area because of the weak winds today as well. So we'll watch out for that. Also, they're calling for um, uh, you know variable winds today, but this morning looks looks pretty good. Um, there was some signs of um, some. Uh, gases in Pohoa this morning but it, the wind picked up on the north and blowed, blowed it away let me see who are they letting go they're letting everybody go everybody go to um, Poiki that's what I that's what I noticed um, we in, in highway 11 Halimaumau had an eruption this morning um, it was about an hour and a half ago. Yeah. You can say anything? I think it was a little bit after six, yeah. So I, I don't know much about it, but we can show you the signal of the instruments picked up. There's a lot of so. earthquakes happening too, so. 
All right, so here's a, a plot of the tilt at the summit over the last two days. And all these little spikes, those are little smaller collapses and little ash explosions, right? Slightly bigger one, and here's the one that just happened this morning uh, after six o'clock, maybe around, I don't know, close to seven perhaps. So a much bigger explosion. Yeah, the report that I saw, I saw it put ash 15,000 feet into the air. Um, so I haven't looked at the dispersal model yet, but uh, with the weak winds, we might see a little bit more ash. Let's see if I can find that, find that here real quick. Again, there's reports. Oh, thank you for letting us know about um, Hilo on uh, Hilo bad vog. But here this morning we smelled a little voggy and and some bad gases. But it looked like we had some north winds come through and push that away. But we still, you know, the smell is still still there. Um, so yeah, that's my take on um, that's my take on um, Pohiki. So the cracks on highway that's steaming still no. So we'll talk about what's why the cracks. Um, so can you talk about the cracks in Halimau Mall or on the road? On the road, okay. So well, here, let me flip the, well, first let me show this. So we're just talking about, about that about that ash explosion, and uh, the USGS has uh, this division um, that actually uh, tries to have an idea of where the ash might go. Right. So this is a, a model they put together for the. For the ash explosion this morning, um, they say it was at uh, five. Oh, I, can't, I can't tell the time. It's on, not in Hawaiian time, but you basically can see it originates up here, rises in the air, and it gets carried pretty quick off to the northwest. So that does mean there could be a little bit of ash falling over in the direction of Kona, possibly to, earlier this morning. That. We should view um, Ahala. We might have seen some ash fall. Yeah. Usually the winds go kind of more this direction, right? So it's kind of going more. South, more south, and I don't know if south we actually got high enough to get over Mount Loa or not. That's the interesting part of it. Yeah. Now let's look at the earthquakes. Let me, uh, 1.4 SO2 in Ocean View. Woo! It's bad. That. Yeah. Bad SO2. In... All right. So here's the earthquakes over the past day, and they're all up around Halemamo at the summit of the volcano once again. And if we look at the sizes and depths, they're all kind of fairly shallow, you know, half a kilometer, or one kilometer is maybe about a half mile. So there's kind of nothing deeper than that until you get to this one. And these are in a range of 27, 27, 25, 33, 27, 26, 27. They're all happening around the volcano area. So the, the summit is still uh, sagging. Yeah, sagging from the magma leaving that area. So it's, it's still coming down and it's not, not unusual to see a delay between the magma actually leaving and then the thing actually sagging and collapsing. This is going to go on for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Alright guys, so that's what, that's our morning, um, our morning um, update. So everybody, stay safe today. If you want to go down to Poiki to surf and swim and enjoy the ocean, Today's a good day, but if you want to go down to Poiki to go check out the lava and put first responders at risk, stay home. <laughs> right? That's right. Yeah, it's not a time for sightseeing. Yeah. Other than that, hello everybody. Have a good day. We'll be talking more with Dr. Phil later on. And um, stay classy, Puna. Aloha.